Hello everyone and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in New York City for Advertising Week where I'm delighted to be joined by Ryan Fleisch, Senior Director of Product Marketing at Adobe. Ryan, such a pleasure having you on the program today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Looking forward to diving in. At Adobe, you are changing the world through personalized digital experience. Based on your vast data insights, what emerging trends in user behavior or content creation are you seeing that might reshape the landscape over the next few years? Yeah, that's what we're all about at Adobe. And I'll give you a quick history lesson. About 15 years ago, almost to the day, we were a creative and publishing company and we decided to acquire Omniture, a web analytics company. And if you read the headlines from that time, it's pretty funny because everyone's saying, what were they thinking? There's no synergies between these business. This is crazy. Uh, but I love what our CEO always says that maintaining a status quo is not a business strategy. And so to your question, right, that's what gave way to saying, yeah, there's all this content getting produced. But unless you have the data behind that to understand what's resonating and how it should be used and where it should be used, it's moot. So our journey since then has been pretty incredible to go from analytics to then housing assets to understanding audiences and ultimately then tying all of that together in ways that has only been talked about in years past. So the big trends that we're seeing now is one, just an explosion of data more so than ever before. IDC talks about the global data sphere doubling in size just in the four year period that we're in right now. So if you think about how do we actually understand customers and what's gonna resonate from a creative standpoint with them, there's more data than ever that we have to really sift through and understand. And that's where our tools along with you know, some help from AI uh, are really making that possible. Great insights, thank you, Ryan. I'm a big history fan as well, and Adobe was founded over 40 years ago and offers groundbreaking technology that really empowers everyone everywhere to imagine, create, and bring any digital experience to life. How is the data cloud allowing the team to adapt to the changing needs of your consumers? I think the first thing is just the amount of data that's required. Like I mentioned a second ago, how that continues to explode. That's where Snowflake is a powerhouse. So if customers can say, yeah, I have a wealth of data in Snowflake and also powered by your AI data cloud on understanding that, we wanna make sure that when it comes to that in the moment engagement of how you're gonna use which data and power which creative for a customer, you can tap into all of that. So I'm really excited about the partnership that we have between Adobe and Snowflake and the new technology we just rolled out with federated audience composition because it gives whole new pathways for data teams to say, yeah, I don't have to copy all of my data into Adobe, right? We don't want all of your data, right? We just want the data that's meant to power the best customer experiences. So by being able to say, yeah, I can bolster the investment I've already made in Snowflake and federate that data and just query it to really then enrich audiences, enrich profiles, or do better segmentation. Um, that's all good things for how those experiences are gonna turn out. It's great to hear, Ryan, and Adobe is making the world more creative, productive, and personalized with artificial intelligence as a co-pilot that amplifies human ingenuity. How do you balance enhancing productivity through AI while ensuring that human creativity remains at the core of that experience? I'll give you one more uh, kind of trip down memory lane here. When, since we're at Ad Week, um, I started at Adobe just over 10 years ago. And on my second year, we created this new set of features that was basically for advertising teams to be able to pull in a creative asset from Photoshop or Illustrator and pick apart the layers to it and do some dynamic creative optimization. It was amazing technology, really powered everything. Nobody bought it. Wow, Because really? at the time, everyone was still so siloed between teams, right? You had creative teams that wanted to remain in complete control over the creative, and you didn't have the right tooling and the right harmony between teams to say, hey, advertising teams, you have more variants of this, but within reason. When we do our voice of the market survey every year, two years ago, the number one trend that popped up to the top from brands all over the world was, I want to have a better harmony between my creative and my data teams. And so we've kind of been, you know, rattling in our cage, ready for that moment. And to your question, that's where we see now, you know, the ability for creatives to actually stay doing the work that they love and focusing on being creative and not just having to create different variants of content um, and different iterations of that, but actually being able to put the right guardrails behind that and saying, yeah, you can explode the amount of creative you have to keep that fresh, but still remaining true to your brand and your design standards. So that's what we're really excited now about those two teams coming together. I absolutely love that. Love that. Allow them to do what they want to do. Exactly. Just more of it. 
And to put some data behind that, actually, I'll just mention it's, you know, we did some, some market research on this and with generative AI coupled with the fact that, like I mentioned, there's more touch points and data than ever before, the demand for the amount of content is gonna go up 5X in the next two years alone. So you think of most creative teams just can't keep up with that demand. So if they can allow marketers and other teams to be a little bit more autonomous, um, of being able to get the variance and the sizing that they need for their channels, uh, that's a huge win. It's an absolute win-win on both sides, yeah. to your point, Ryan. As you mentioned, we're at Advertising Week where a lot of discussion is in regards to the future of digital advertising. From, you, from Adobe's unique perspective as both a creator of advertising tools and a major player in marketing technology, what do you see as the most significant shifts coming in the industry over the next few years? I'm really excited about this shift because I spent... I started my career in advertising. I did it on the agency side, then on the brand side, and then worked on Adobe's ad tech technology uh, for a long time before working on our customer data platform. I think there's been two big trends you always heard about, right? The first wave was the unification of channels, of how are we going to get the same message across channels or the same experience. So there was a lot of you know, integration work that needed to happen there. And then the second big wave was how do we unify ad tech and martech? And that still is ongoing, right? And new innovations coming to bear there. But I think the third big one is how do we actually unify different teams across different organizations with the right data to understand customers, um, but still with the privacy and governance at the forefront of that? So I'm gonna use a really cheesy phrase that maybe everybody's gonna groan at, but you always hear about a 360 view of your customer. And I view it more as a 3D view of your customer, that if you get a 360 view of your customer, great, that's every touch point that you might understand about that person. But there is a whole other rotation of what other brands and publishers and data partners that you might work with, right, are gonna understand to actually fill that out. So, sorry for the cheesy phrase there, but I think, you know, there's really some truth behind how are we gonna have now data collaboration in a way that says, yes, between two brands where maybe they both have an understanding of me and my profile and I've, I've given consent to them, how could they collaborate on both understanding a little bit more about me? Or between an advertiser and a publisher, if I wanna find you know, me on a publisher and potentially message to me, how am I gonna do that in a way that is privacy safe and doesn't just throw all of my data over the fence or have a publisher throw all theirs over the fence? So that data collaboration and of course, you know, powered by clean room technology, I think is the next big thing that is going to come together both with advertising, but as well as with customer data platforms to really walk into the next frontier of complete data management of not just what you know, but what all of your partners are gonna understand as well. Well, Ryan, I really appreciate your time and insights. Thank you so much for joining us here at Advertising Week. What's next for you in the team at Adobe? What I just mentioned is we're trying to push the limits of what a customer data platform is and what it should be. If you're a brand, you've been hearing for years that third-party cookies are going away. And yes, there's been some changes to that plan in the recent months, but they're still being diminished by a heavy clip, right? Most industry reports say that cookies are in account for maybe 17% of the web. So regardless if they still persist, right? Brands need a way to have a cookie-less strategy and other channels. And they've been told, hey, go buy a customer data platform largely to do that. But I think many of them are left asking, if I used cookies to do new customer acquisition, if I used cookies to understand more about customers that I don't yet have a first party profile on, how's the CDP gonna help me do that with just first party data? And so, you know, we've heard the industry loud and clear and said, for our customer data platform, it has to have first, second, and third party data, all as equal class citizens, and be able to power acquisition all the way through loyalty. And if a CDP can't do that, then it's not keeping up with what brands are looking for today on their data strategy. So that's really what our next uh, continued big push is here. Very much need a top-down approach to be totally. successful as, as you move forward. Yeah. Well, Ryan, such a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me on the program today. Hey, thanks so much for having me. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green at Data Cloud Now here at Advertising Week. I'll see you soon.